Obviously, we started years and years and years ago as a commercial uh, roofing company. So our bread and butter still to this day and our absolute 100% expertise is gonna be on, and technically the term is low slope roofs, okay? Uh, but we'll all call them flat roofs. And when we go out into homes, it's a huge, huge problem, especially down in Gross Point, a lot of older homes that maybe have been piecemealed together, that they end up with these strange flat roof areas. Sometimes they're at the back, sometimes they're transitions. And out of every hunter that we go on, probably 98 of them are done completely improperly. And while the homeowner might not see it, are actively letting water into the home. So it is a systemic problem in Metro Detroit. It's right up there with ventilation issues on, on homes. And, and that, as every roofer knows, is almost every home you go into is improperly ventilated and not up to code in today's world. So flat roofs, major, major issue. And just sometimes homeowners don't know about it. How you doing, Brent? Welcome back, this is Hyrick Dunn. My name's Adam Helfman. It's the weekend, it's Labor Day weekend. What are you smoking on your grill? Text me, 97136, you got a smoker. Is it a brisket, is it a pork butt? Is it a kosher hot dog? Is it salmon? What is it? I wanna know, text me, 97136. I've got Bill Burkhart from Four Seasons Kangaroo, one of the Hyrick Dunn Priest King contractors in studio, because they hop to it, welcome. Well, thank you. How you doing, brother? Ah, uh, doing. I'm awesome. I've been in the, up since midnight, working on my smoker today. Well, that's what I say. You, you know, when we first talked at the end of the week, I'm like, "Hey, man, come into the radio this week." And you're like, "Dude, I'm going to be smoking my meats." I'm like, "Well, you're not going to you have to babysit them." <laughs> you're yeah. like, "All right, let me check." And you're like, "Now you're here. Thank you, by the way." It's all. Oh, thank you for having us. It's a labor of love, though, man. I know, but okay. So tell me a little bit about what you guys, because I want to get some savory. Oh, so what we got juice. going on on the on the smoker today? We got a ten pound brisket. That went on right around 1 o'clock this morning. And then around 3 a.m. or so, I got the uh, pork belly going right on top of it. So it's dripping down. Had them rubbed down for about a day and a half in the fridge. So Okay, so when you rub it, when you do the rub, because I'm a, I'm a rib guy. I like ribs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I like a dry rub. Mm -hmm. There used to be a place in Canada called Tunnel Barbecue. That was my place. Listen, I'm right there with you on the dry rub. Don't give me a bunch of sauce, and I, yeah, yeah. I want to taste the meat. Okay, so then you got the dry rub. Yeah. You you put it in the, the smoker. Mm-hmm. And, how, and then I see, like, a, you know, I go on YouTube, and I'm like, it's just like the home improvement people. Oh, I went on YouTube. I saw how to do the roof, a low-slope roof. It doesn't leak. I know how to do everything. I saw it on YouTube. Well, I'm watching these barbecue guys on YouTube, and I'm dying. I'm loving it. I'm getting hungry. Trying to, I'm almost eating my hand. So do you do it like this? You put it in there. You smoke it for 8, 10 hours or whatever. But do you ever see them, like, take it out and wrap it in paper? Uh, you're, you're speaking my language. Okay, so let's talk. Well, give me the process. Okay, so what you, well, let's talk brisket, right? Aaron Franklin, mm, Franklin brisket. Barbecue, man. He's king of it all. Okay. And I, I watched a couple different scenarios. Some guys are doing foil. Some guys are doing it naked, just leaving it in there the whole time. But um, when you wrap it with the paper, you do it to, once it hits about 160, 170 degrees internal temp, pull it out, wrap it in the paper. The paper allows it to still breathe, so you're going to get the bark on it. But it's actually going to almost steam it, so it really makes that brisket tender. Okay, using terminology here that I need the listeners to know. You said the bark. Oh, <laughs> what is that? Is that the little crusty edge? It is. It mm. is. Well, that's mm. one. You you want an insider tip? Yeah. Everyone, when they're cooking their steaks and things, knows to, hey, leave the steak out for like an hour, let it come up to room temperature. If you're smoking, keep that puppy in the fridge until it's going on the grill because it only absorbs smoke until it hits about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're smoking it from a lower or a colder temperature, it's going to absorb more of that smoke, get more of that bark, get more of really? that flavoring So that's on almost it. like a roast beef hack uh -huh. or a brisket hack. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm getting hungry. Oh, I'm, I can't wait to get back. Are you so, kidding? The best part of cooking is you get all those burnt ends for yourself as the chef. The burnt ends. Mm. Mm. Now you're getting me hungry. Oh, yeah. Okay, so how many hours? Uh, they're, they're both nine pounds. The brisket will probably be right around 12. The, uh, the pork belly will be somewhere in that nine to 10 range. So, cause you okay. got to get them both up to, so people, people pull that pork belly off too soon. And when it's are tough. you pulling yours off? off? Uh, so they went on it. It, it really comes back down to, you got to have a thermometer. Cause okay. they, they got to both hit 205. That's two, the magic 205 number. is the finished number. Yep. And then what? You let it rest. So then you pull it off. Hopefully it's already wrapped, right? You should have it wrapped. Pull it out, 
wrap it in a towel, and throw it in a, in a dry cooler and let it sit there for one to two hours. You can leave it there longer if you want. All it's going to do is continue to steam and tenderize. So a dry cooler. And then you pull it out and you slice it. Bingo. Now cross you make grain. It... Cross grain. Okay. That's the other thing. So, like, if you want a roof that doesn't leak or you want a good brisket, <laughs> I guess <laughs> Bill Burkhardt Jr. Is, is your man. Now, if someone buys a roof from you from the show, will you give them a, a cooked brisket? I'll bring, them, I'll bring them right out one. Whole, whatever size they want. That's a great – instead of giving a discount on a roof, tell them you buy a roof, I'll come over with a new grill, and it includes it, included in it is a 10-hour smoking session with you. You got it. But they got to bring the bourbon, okay? That's that's the rule. Bourbon. Now, bourbon is a whiskey, right? Yes, sir. Do you like whiskey? Are you that guy? I, Are you I, one of those guys with those big cubes of ice around the square? Listen, I got about 40 people coming over to my house. I literally have a bucket, like a 12-by-12 12 12 bucket filled with ice balls waiting. Really? Oh yeah. I have the ice ball maker that looks like the uh, um, the desk star. Death star. Oh, beautiful! So you it's a you put water in it, and when you pull it off, it's death star it's ice. Got the cube. mold right in oh, there. I love it. Mm. I'm a Star Wars guy. That's hey, I'm Batman. You oh, know man. that? Are you? Oh God, yeah. Oh, which Batman was your favorite though? It's tough. It's a loaded question. You know that. I got to go with Keaton, uh, but I like you I like just, the original Michael Keaton. Uh, I think Keaton was great, but um, I actually think the. The overall best balance of them all was was Ben Affleck, believe it or not. Oh, dude. Uh, listen, I, it's, when you watch the comics, the Frank Miller man, he hits the nail on the head. The movies weren't that great, but he was good. <sighs> okay. Like Justice League, I understand, you know, but I'm... <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I agree with you, Val Kilmer wasn't the best Batman. But... Well, you should, Clooney, come on. Yeah. So no, ba- not him either. The Bale movies were the best movies. Yeah, Christian Bale. Those are those are the ones that I'm seeing. Oh, those are the best movies, far far and away. But he played Batman the best. I think the director was the best. Well, no one was. You can. I wish they'd make Batman movies like Speaking that again. Of superheroes and contractors. Who You're, would have been the best contractor? Clearly us. No, no, I'm talking about superheroes. Oh, who would have been? Actually, Batman. He's the oh. world's greatest detective. He's going to find the leak and solve it. I think he has the best toolkit. Absolutely. Right. What tool doesn't he have? Yeah, but. Let me ask you a question. Don't you think Superman would be like get the job done quicker? No, he's a bull in a he's china shop. He's got X-ray vision. No. no, Superman has X-ray vision. Okay, he can see behind the walls if there's mold. He can look at your roof and tell you exactly where it's leaking. How about them apples, huh? Where's What's your favorite fruit? Where's the infrared? Where are you going to be able to see that water going through layers? Superman has infrared eyesight, uh, dude. I don't know. Oh my god. I don't know. Okay, and then <laughs> how about demolition? The Hulk. The Hulk, the thing, either one of them, just right? just destroying it. Oh man, I'm gonna tell you right now, Batman could be the best. I mean, because he's you know he has the best toolkit and the tool belt. He Tony, does. Tony Stark too. Oh, uh, I just thought about that. Who's your favorite superhero outside of construction? <laughs> I, I, it is Batman, far and away. Literally, literally, hands down. Since the time I was a kid, I remember my grandmother sneaking me in when I was like three years old, four years old, to go see Keaton's Batman. Because my parents didn't allow it because it was PG-13 and I was, you know, four or five years old, whatever it was. Your dad? Oh, yeah. Bill Burkhart Bill Sr., Bill, crazy partier, oh, says yeah. that my son can't watch a PG-13? Nope. He was, that was, that was, they laid down the law and thankfully grandma swooped in and. Now we know why you turned out the way you did. Exactly. Okay, so I, I like Batman, but I think I'm, my favorite superhero's got to be, oof, that's a tough one. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't. I have to really think about it. I'm a. I like. I like Iron Man, because I like. I like the Tony Stark end. Oh yeah. I love Captain America. How can you not? He's. I pure. love Superman. He's great. I love man. Superman too. Superman's great. He's just boring. I love the Avengers. The when they, when they team up, they don't get any better. Especially with the movies now. Uh, can you be Justice League versus the Avengers? There's no contest, right? Uh, I would love to tell you that that Justice League is going to win, but. Just on cinematic profile alone, got to give it to the Avengers right now. Oh, dude, nothing's better. I seen it like three times. Just I bought the blue. Game. I bought the the Blu-ray DVD. You know oh. the the box version or whatever. Oh yeah, There's some deleted scenes in there. My buddy got the. Uh, I watch it all the time. The 4K. He's got the giant setup. Literally the day the download was available, had us out. So, told him that's why you got hired, man. You're a Marvel fan. We uh, there you go. <laughs> We're talking with Bill Burkhart Jr. He's the owner and. Family, yeah. uh, Four Seasons Kangaroo. If you guys look on the east side. Yeah, uh, essentially 19 Mile Road in Grossbeck, right in the heart of Macomb County and Clinton Township. How uh, How was business this year for you? Uh, we've been doing really fantastic. Um, 
we're up about 20 25 percent over the previous year good for you man yeah we've been we've been hustling. Saying, so you know obviously we talk about how to get a roof that doesn't leak and i always tell homeowners it's not the product it's the installer that's more important than the product people kind of argue with me a little bit but I want your opinion on that. You could take an Owens Corning roof, a GAF roof, a certain teed roof, any of those, right? Yeah. And you don't install it properly, it's worthless. Yeah. They're they're gonna they're gonna break down too fast. They're uh, I like my dad's line. We are professionals. If you want to hire a guy who wants to work for beer money, go ahead. Just hire us when it leaks. I have a podcast that we talked about. Don't feed the animals, and it's uh, feeding the workers. Oh yeah. And Roberto was uh, telling me, you know about oh don't give them beer yeah if you want to work for beer money don't don't hire that guy that's a, but there's a lot of them out there we know it and, and we that's why we got our service team they're running all day going out fixing fixing roofs i just did a video and we ran the numbers on this over 50 percent of our repair calls are on roofs that are 10 years old or less really yes okay, so what does that tell you well i always and the average ticket on those repairs is around twelve hundred dollars that's cheap, though. I'm thinking it should be more. Well, exactly. All right, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk about low slope roofing. Yeah. Uh, what? Why? Why would anyone get a metal roof today? We're going to talk about that as well. I'm Adam Healthman. You're listening to the Higher It Done Radio Network. We'll be. Right Good morning. Welcome back. This is Higher It Done. My name's Adam Healthman. I've got Bill Burkhardt Jr. from uh, Four Seasons Kangaroo Roofing Studio. Welcome back, Bill. Thank you, Adam. So homeowners, you know have all kinds of different roof sizes. You know, we haven't really talked about a low slope roof. So for the listener here, tell us what a low slope roof is. So for uh, the, the average consumer out there, the best way to think of a low slope roof, flat roof, right? Everyone okay. thinks that's that. The technical name for that is a low slope roof. 212, 312. Yep. Anything is, beneath a four is a low slope roof. Is there a 112? Or there is. Is it a flat? It's essentially flat. So when it's flat, water doesn't run off. Correct. So is it a different material? Yeah, yeah. There, once you get beneath a four pitch roof, there's a whole different category of materials that you can and can't use. Um, you're going to see things like TPO, which is a vinyl membrane. You're going to see rubber. Um, you're going to see uh, torch down. You're going to see uh, a two ply peel and stick. Um, the one thing you really don't see and you shouldn't fundamentally is metal. You know, metal's not waterproof. Everyone thinks it is, it's not. It's water shedding. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. Um, unless you do a mechanically seamed panel, which is even more than a traditional metal roof, you know, they're, they're just water shedding. So if you have them sitting on there, they're going to back up under those clips okay. and get right back into the house. So not all roofers can do low slope or, or you know, no slope roofs. Correct. So, cause I've seen where you have like a 312, 412, 5, 612 pitch, but then it goes into a flat, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a, they have an old, an added on sunroom or something. Yep. And that's where the problem is. Huge problem. And, and out of every 100 homes we go into that have a, a low slope, especially in residential, at least 95, 98 of them are done improperly. And what, what consumers don't realize is there's a whole different set of certifications that a roofer has to go through to even be able to do low slope roofing. So if you're like a GAF master lead or certain teeth select, you, you're already covered on that, right? No, no. You're not. No. That's Ooh. just your shingles. Oh, uh -huh. this is important. It's huge, 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 huge. And that's and there's a lot of well-meaning roofers out there who might be certified in the shingles or the steep slope application but aren't and think they know what they're doing. So when you come out to a house, and you just told me 50% of the roof repairs that you're doing right now are roofs that are less than 10 years old. Yep. Wow, that's a big thing. So now when you go out to a flat roof, mm -hmm. what are... What are some of the problems you're seeing? Um, transitions. How does it tie into the existing, if there's a steep slope, how does it tie in there? Um, huge thing is on the edge. Uh, what you'll see is, you know, you'll get your drip edge or your clip metal. Yeah. And what you'll see is people running the membrane right over the top of that. Well, that's not right, because all you're going to need is a piece of wind or a little bit of moisture to get back up underneath there, and immediately it's into your, into your home, into your dwelling. So it's supposed to be run under. Metal goes on top, and then it's seamed in over top of that. So how does a homeowner know? Can they call your company to make sure that they had it done right? Oh, absolutely. We have um, uh, Alec Fells, our, our, our low-slope specialist. Um, You'll send him out. Yeah. Yeah, Al will come out, inspect it all, identify any issues. And if it's a replacement, he'll tell you it. If it's a repair, we'll get you taken care of. I love it. Love it. Love it. All right, well, that's cool. 
So uh, Four Seasons Kanga Roof, uh, the website's www.kanga-roof.com. What's up with the name Kanga Roof? Oh, you never forget it, do you? No. Well, yeah, hop you. to it. I love, the, I love that. There you go. Is there other kangaroos around the country, or is it just you? There are. There are. So um, we belong to a couple different um, business. Um, Networks type of thing. Bingo. Peer groups. Basically, just how do we get better? And when we got serious about the residential game about nine, ten years ago, one of the big pushes that our, our coach made to us was, hey, Four Seasons Roofing and Sheet Metal sounds good. Entirely forgettable. You got to have an earwig. You got to have some consumers can remember. And they showed us a couple different ideas. And when we saw Kangaroo, if we hop to it, it's slam dunk. So I agree. Okay. You, you know, there's other roofing companies that we we deal with at Higher Done yeah. who you like because you compete against. You would rather compete against a company that understands overhead, that understands commission, that understands margin, understands the cost of running a business as opposed to beer money yeah. on a Friday, right? Yeah. Isn't that where you want to be? Oh, totally. When we did the roof round table, all those guys in here, I, I, I've gotten jobs where I beat them and they beat me on jobs. You know Exterior what? Exterior experts. We've got uh, Peaks Construction. Yep. Tettle. Tittle Brothers. Yep. His, his jingle is Forget About the Others. Oh, yeah. You got American Standard. Got a leak, don't freak. Kangaroo, if you hop to it. Yeah. So it's good because those are, it shows all the professionalism level for you guys, and I appreciate that. So um, when, it, when it comes to getting roofs done today, right, mm -hmm. one of the things that I like about Kanga, and here's the thing. Homeowners come to HireDone.com. They don't know. You know, they know they need a new roof. They know they hear me on the radio. They know they see me on TV, and they say, okay, we, we trust what Adam's saying. We trust his experience. And then I send out a guy like you. Yeah. So I am I sleep at night because no problem, right? What's the worst that happens? There's a problem, you solve it. That's what I look for in contractors. Not only do they have to be certified and pass the background screening, but they have to be solution-minded. And so that's where you guys are coming. Oh, let me tell you, I, I did a repair recently. Guy had major leak in the interior of his house. There was a wall uh, over his garage, tied in there. Flashing was completely messed up. Wrote him up for his solution. Redid all the wall flashing. We get that torrential downpour like two weeks ago, and the guy calls me freaking out. Oh, my God, you made it worse. Well, there was like six inches of rain that came down in your neighborhood in an hour period. Right. I think it was the amount of rain, but you know what? We missed one thing. There was, a, there was an issue in the mortar. Right. Listen, I, I am so sorry, sir. Let me figure this out. Let me get my mortar guy out here. Let's figure out a solution. And, and we're working through that. But what I stress that stressed him is at the end of the day, making sure your home is dry and you're taken care of is our number one number one goal. And the guy was kind of blown away. He goes, I, I was expecting to come out here and have to fight. What's there to fight about? Well, that's the difference, okay? There's the blame game. Bingo. And it, everyone blaming everyone else. Topic for the podcast uh, Paul and Roberto, the blame game. When the contractor never takes responsibility, the blame game. When the mm -hmm. when the homeowners blame each other, we're going to talk. I got some great stories. Oh, so we just launched a podcast. It's not available yet, but it's coming out soon. I got to download. I got to hook it up, man. It's I'm called, on the road all day. It's called contractor therapy. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. It's 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 all it is is home improvement horror stories. Contractor horror stories about homeowners and homeowners contract story horror stories about contractors. Oh god! And then we tell the story, we bring in guests, and then I give the anecdote at the end. Okay, so if you want to avoid the contractor coming in and looking through your underwear drawers, <laughs> if you want to avoid, you know, the contractors coming in and asking for you know donuts every morning, here's what you got to do. But we're gonna have a story to tell. I love it. Yeah, and I'm assuming. And maybe I shouldn't assume, but I want to ask. You'll have some stories to share with us? Oh, we, we may have run into one or two clients in our time frame that... We'll change the name to Protect the Innocent. Yeah. Oh, of course. Absolutely. But we need your experience. I want your dad in there. I want to talk about, you know, what happened. Oh, he's got some humdingers. Yeah. So um, that's the important thing. And I wanted to make sure. So how long does it take uh, if someone calls uh, Kangaroo Roof this week mm -hmm. uh, to come out and just get an estimate? You be out the same week? Um, you out, are you busy a week we're, behind? We're pretty much a full week booked up. Uh, you, you know what I would stress to every homeowner is, if you think you need a roof, you need to call us right now, yeah. because every week you wait, we get more backed up, and our best promotion of the year is right now, which is you get free gutters with a roof replacement and fifty percent off gutter guards. 
we do not run a better promotion than that. Ever. Okay, so someone buys a new roof from you, it's free gutters and then half off gutter guards. Yeah. Now they have to buy the gutter guards or the thing you just no. get them. Okay, so that's a really good promotion. It's insane. Okay, so with that being said, what if I say to you, I want to do that, I want to take advantage now, but I don't want to do the roof till after, um, you know, uh, the holidays or after Halloween because I do a big Halloween deal and my house is all dressed up. Can you do it after Halloween? Are you going to honor the deal and then schedule me after Halloween? Listen, as long as you're signed up and you put your deposit down, we'll, we'll lock in. It's not a problem. Okay. Speaking of deposits. Yeah. Average roof today is 10 grand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Up or down, we'll give it a few dollars. What's the deposit for a kangaroo? Roof? For us, on a, on a shingle roof, anything that's stock, it's $500. Okay, just that's so to get some skin in the game. Yeah, to have a binding contract, there has to be an exchange of goods. We try right. and make Meeting it. Meeting of the minimum. minds. Bingo. Yeah, right, gotcha. Consideration. So, yep. I gotcha. Which is important. Oh, huge. You know, because I have contractors who say, no money down, $100, $500, none of this 50% down. No, no. The only time that that comes into play is if you're doing something completely custom, like a metal roof. Because if you change your mind or you back out, none of those materials can be used right. on a different job. So they're yours. That's what we always tell them. If you back out, great. You bought yourself all the supplies. We're not going to hold you in anything. Bill Burkhart, Four Seasons Kangaroo. The number is 586-566-0308. www.kanga-roof.com out of Clinton Township. All you, you take care of all of Metro Detroit. Anywhere. Can you imagine? Look how fast it goes when we're having fun. It's insane. Every time. Thanks for coming in, brother. No, Adam, thank you. Uh, we'll have, we're taking a break. Thanks for listening, everyone. I'm Adam Helfman. This is the Higher Done Radio Network. Welcome back, folks. This is Higher Done. My name's Adam Helfman. It's the weekend. That's right. All your home improvement stuff to talk about today. How to fix, repair, or remodel everything within the four corners of your lot. We got a lot going on. I got Bill Burkhart Jr. from Kanga Roofing Studio. Good morning. Good morning, Adam. Happy to be hopping to it. That's right, my friend. So, a uh, guy texted in, my buddy got a beer guy and his friends to replace his roof cheap. No permit, etc. First big rainfall after 15000 in interior damage upstairs. The insurance wouldn't cover it. Don't get a beer guy. Yeah. And, and where's that contractor at? Yeah, right. The beer guy. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, in other uh, in conversations you and I, you've talked about, you know, don't buy pay the guy that's going to work for beer money. Yeah. It, 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 you're, you're setting yourself up for a world of disaster. A, if something, <clears throat> excuse me, if something goes wrong, there's no way for you to even track them down. If, if they're not, if they don't got a storefront, if they don't have a Facebook, a better business, a website, you need to, uh, and, and, Let's be real. There are some good contractors out there who operate that way, but they're the minority. You know, that's not the majority. And if something goes wrong, and let me tell you, it's renovation. Things will go wrong. Yeah. You got, what's your recourse if you hire a beer guy? You really don't, well, I'm, I'm going to go after him. Good luck. Good yeah. luck. We know the reality. They they close up shop and they're gone. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. And that's, you know, listen, you, you made a good point. There are some good contractors out there who just, you know, don't. They don't do the things. What I do is like, I look at, when I look at a contractor, I look at their social media. I see how, you know, it's funny. When's the last time they posted on their Facebook? Is it three, four, five, six months ago? And I ask them, hey, why, you know, when people are looking for your company and they see that, they see you haven't posted, like, what's going on? Why haven't you? And the first thing they say, well, my nephew, you know, he was doing it for me, my son, but he's back in college. I just haven't gotten around to it. It, neg it, it gives a negative about your company, even though you may do great work. Right. Well, it, it's Facebook alone. Facebook is a validation now. If if you're a real company, yeah. you know, if you're not just a roofer, if you're a real company who's out to be here for the long term and take care of people, your social media presence is just an extension of your vision and values of the company, and you better be articulating that to the public. Right. And if not, you know, again, who knows? Um, Hey, I have a question. Someone just texted in. Can they give a deposit for your promotion and get the job done in the spring? Is also financing available? So financing is available. Um, yeah. We can't do that promotion and, and hold it over to spring. There's too much volatility in the pricing of right, the, the shingles. Yeah. yeah, Shingles go up like crazy. Uh, the, it, I use 2018 all the time as the example. It went up six. There were six different price increases in 2018 alone. This year hasn't been as bad. There's only been two or three. But I, I would love to. What we will do for somebody 
is like for folks who sign up in November, December, January, because yep. they need the roof, they know it, but we can't do it because the weather's inclement, we'll sign you up. If there's temporary repairs that we need to do to keep you dry, we will not charge you for them. Um, and then as soon as the weather's warm enough, we you, you go right to the front of the line come springtime, and you're the first roofs we're doing when the weather okay. breaks. So the guy that just asked about the financing and that, we oh, should yeah. have him call you. Oh, absolutely. And, and just, it's because it's free. You're going to come out for free anyways. Bingo. All right, so that's what you do. Because sometimes you'll figure out a way. Maybe just get it done now. Because they have like 18 months same as cash. Bingo. Why not get it done now and not pay for, you know, and then can you, well, yeah, you'll figure it out. Yeah. That's a, actually a good idea. So I'm um, glad that we talked about that. Oh, heck yeah. How much is when you go on a roof jobs now today? Yeah. How many homeowners are, are like, you said 50% of the roof you're doing, to, roof repairs mm-hmm. you're doing today are from. 10 uh, years or less. Roofs that are only less than 10 years old. Yeah. That's crazy. How many homeowners, the last 10 sales that you made? Yeah. How many homeowners financed it? Oh, God, probably 40, 50% at least. So that financing's growing. Huge. Yeah, huge. Every, it's just part of the reality of the, the 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 society we live in. A lot of people live on monthly budgets, which I get. Makes sense. The world lives on monthly. I live on a week to week budget. Who are you uh, kidding? Exactly. So I mean, for us, you know, and that's what people always ask. Well, well, can I get a cash discount? We set our pricing up so it's standard. It's fair. I don't care if you live in Detroit in Dearborn. Yeah. If you live in New Baltimore, it's all the same. And, and no, that way you don't you do have, zip code pricing. I like no. that. No. Which reminds me, another podcast idea, zip code pricing. The people who live in Bluefield Hills, are they paying more than the people in Detroit or not? I want to know. We're going to talk about that soon. Or the people in Detroit paying more than the people in Bluefield Hills. Correct. Flip it around. It's true. There's you always get, that. You know, you get a royalty on all these these podcast ideas. Yeah, I thank you. Listen, <laughs> we're going to get you in there. Um, so let me ask this. Yeah. Uh, someone texted in. I'm a cable guy. Just wanted to say when roofers put back on a dish, they're never peaked. Tell the homeowner to put in a ticket to have the dish peaked if it's getting to get done. Do you ever take? Yeah. So what does that mean? A, kudos to that guy. Right? Smart. Yeah, because when whenever we're doing a roofing uh, tear off and replacement and there's a satellite dish up there, first thing we ask them, is it staying or going? And if it's staying, we advise them, contact the company, see if you can move it to a pole or to a mount on the, on the, on the home somewhere else, not on the roof. Yeah. If it's going back on the roof, we'll put it back approximately where it is, but you need to coordinate and schedule to have them re-aim it. Bingo. All right. Because we're not we're not satellite experts. No, no. How many times have you seen a satellite just make a hole in the roof? Oh my God. And the guy that installed it and just drilled holes. Yep. Well dab a cock said, Oh, that'll do. Okay, it's a problem. Well, I'm glad you came in for this quick segment. No, it's always happy good to. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, and this was great. The couple of those great uh, quick text messages. Yeah. Bill Burkhart, Four Seasons, Kanga Roof, they hop to it. You know it. Kanga-roof.com, or go to Hire It Done, you'll get Kanga out to your house. Have an awesome Labor Day. Thank you. Get that smoke. Remember, you buy that roof, we're bringing the brisket. Mm, I love that. (laughs) Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Adam. We'll be right back. I'm Adam Helfman. This is the Hire It Done Radio Network.